Hey guys, welcome to today's YouTube video, and today I'm going to be going over round two of my over the board tournament. And I forgot to mention this in yesterday's video, but I did end up recording the uh, over the board tournament, but I could not recover the footage from my phone. Uh, I don't know why, but it's like giving an error every time I try uh, to do it like directly or even upload it to uh, Google Drive. So that is quite unfortunate. Um, I, I wish I could have showed it, but I, I can't do anything about it, so I apologize. At least I'm able to go over the games uh, through the analysis board and show you what I was thinking at the point. So yeah, uh, I got the black pieces twice in a row, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I didn't really mind because I don't really care that much at this point. Uh, so yeah, we played a Sicilian defense, uh, just open Sicilian, and then I played the accelerated dragon, and white took on c6, which I think is just not a very challenging line at all and then he also chose to play very passively with bishop to e2 which i was like basically cringing at so i just played bishop g7 and after f4 i know that like usually you just want to put your knight on h6 to play uh, uh f5 later on which ends up being the top move so kudos to me <laughs> um and after knight c3 i just castle castle and here I implement my plan of playing f5, and he he throws in like this one move check, which I'm like, okay, so so what? Um, and I just play king h8, which is top move, and he plays e5, which again I wasn't really that worried about. First of all, I can play d6, which I was planning on doing, but I can also just play like knight g4, and I saw an idea here. I'm just like, okay, if I put my knight on g4, he can't really kick me out except for like maybe bishop back and if he plays h3 i win an exchange which is what happens so i'll show you in a second so yeah after h3 uh see if you can find the way to win the exchange okay so the move is queen to b6 check and after uh king to h1 it's forced because of these two squares being covered you have at knight to f2 check forking the king and the queen so you take the lesser evil and just take with the rook and you take with the queen. Now I played this part of the game rather inaccurately. I thought it would be accurate to play um, bishop h6 to target this pawn, but I basically just equalize it now. Um, I mean, I still have like a little bit of an advantage, but not as much as I once had. And I, I, I saw like bishop e3 that was the idea, but I, I played queen g3 and now I saw the idea of rook to f1 and I also just completely missed the idea of e6. Apparently that is like a winning move for white. Uh, so yeah, after e6, queen to h4, you have bishop d4 check here and takes and I'm losing a piece. Is that even... e takes d7 is mate after king... What? Okay, so you just have to block. And what you take, and yeah, this this is lost. After here, you knight e4, okay. Anyway, stop analyzing that line so that didn't happen, because rook f1, which I, I didn't see e6, so I imagine my opponent didn't either. So yeah, rook f1, I, I saw this after I played queen g3, I was a little bit disappointed with myself. Of course, I still have a small advantage, but now I play e6, uh, which... I just thought it was a good move. Apparently it's the best move, but I I played this not even knowing that uh, E6 was a winning move for white. So, I don't know, somehow my like my chess brain just found this move. I don't know, I don't know, like, I, I'm like, okay, well, what if I just close down everything? I think my idea behind playing E6 was allowing an escape square for my queen, not necessarily stopping the idea of E6, so, I honestly got kind of lucky with e6 here. Um, so yeah, after after queen, yeah, queen d6 is, I mean, it's just a full blunder of a piece. So, I mean, obviously I just take the piece. I mean, it's a free piece, I'm gonna take it. So now I'm up a full rook. And after knight to um, a4. Also, I think he went here because I thought, I think he was, uh, I think he thought that he was attacking my rook, but my bishop attacks it. So yeah, after knight to a4 here, I play a little sneaky trap, um, and 
it, it ended up working out, which I kind of felt bad after it worked because it was like a little bit just cheeky. Um, yeah, as Frank would say. Um, so yeah, after after knight to a4 here, I played the sneaky rook to g8. And if you're if you're tactically smart, you'll see the idea here. Because I, I calculated this, I'm like, okay, his idea is obviously go to knight c5. So how can I stop knight c5? So this move is a little bit prophylactic, and you'll see why. After knight to c5, find the move to win yet another piece. Bishop f8. Just a simple skewer. Both these, uh, both these pieces are looking at the knight. Knight only has one defender, and uh, this is x-raying through the queen, so the queen has to move. Um, so yeah, he goes queen to d3, because if I take, he can save the knight. But I just take with the, my bishop, and now my bishop protects my queen, and takes, takes, and I think trading queens there was just, like, the worst possible decision ever. Um, no disrespect to my opponent if he's watching, but I don't think you should trade, uh, especially queens when you're down material. Um, so yeah, I think it was just a bad decision, but, uh, yeah. So yeah, after here, uh, a3, uh, I... I'm just like, okay, I wanted to play a5 anyways, and this kind of just also helps me play it because now I'm stopping an idea as well. The reason I wanted to go a5 is to go bishop to a6 is the only real prospect of my bishop. I mean, these pawns are like really just hurting my bishop, and this bishop is basically a pawn at this point. It's only like detrimental to me. Like, it's disconnecting my rooks. It sure is protecting this pawn, but I can just like, I don't have to care. So yeah, after. After uh, c3 here, you literally just play like a4, and now like this pawn is cemented in place. I think this was a good technique by me. And after bishop back to e2, I played my idea of bishop to a6, and he doesn't trade this time and plays bishop back to d1. Now this does attack my pawn, but I simply go bishop to c4. I think this was actually a really good move, because now I'm just kind of like looking at everything, and this is protected by the rook now, like... Uh, White basically can't do anything here. I can do whatever I want. So yeah, after king to h2, which is just kind of a whatever move, I mean, what else does white do, you know? I play rook gb8, just activating my only rook that isn't doing anything. And after bishop takes a4, I found the top move. Um, so yeah, the second move here, which is rook takes a4, is uh, minus 14. But I played the super accurate move that gives you mate in 14, rook takes b2. Now I, I calculated this for like a, a couple minutes. I'm just like, okay, I'm up so much material that this bishop doesn't even matter. And if I take on b2, my idea is like basically unstoppable with bishop d5, rook here, and bishop to f2, and bishop back to h4. And like the threat on this pawn is uh, pretty devastating. So yeah, after bishop back, obviously seeing the bishop, I play my idea. This is what happened, and I played here. Now, obviously, white has this idea, but uh, I just take, and like I just get yet another rook onto the attack of the king. Takes, takes, um, which again, isn't really a great idea since you've done material. And rook to d4, getting out of the pin. But uh, yeah, here I can just stack on the second rank. And at this point, I was like, okay, he's not resigning. I'm up so much material. I'm going to make him resign, or I'm going to try and make him resign at least. Because that, I don't know, I'm, that's just my play style, you know? I, I like to have a little bit of fun when I can have some fun. And if it's a rapid game and, like, I'm up this much material and my opponent's not resigning, I'm going to have a little fun. So I take, take, and just start pushing. Give him a little hope of promoting. I mean, I just can play rugby too. And he promotes, and yep. I just troll a little bit and under promote to a knight. Um, because why not? I mean, I'm just having a little fun. So yeah, I mean, he's just making all the moves that he can. I'm just like trolling a little bit, moving my knight around, cutting off his king. I take the rest of his pawns. He can only move his king now. Uh, I wanted to like cut off his king here and uh, just play rook f2. And so he can only move in these two squares and just like... Uh, take all of his pawns and like promote something i don't know maybe another knight um, but he played uh king 2 g2 and not allowing me to do what i wanted 
So I decided, okay, I've had enough. This this is this has gone on far far long enough. So I play a rook to f2, king to g3, h4 check, king to h3, and rook to h2, checkmate. So yeah, I got my first point of the tournament. Uh, it could have been one and a half, but I didn't take the draw. Whatever, uh, it is what it is. I wasn't as disappointed at this point. Um, yeah, and let's go through the analysis or the game review accuracy. My opponent played at 77.6% and I played at 84.9%. Not bad. Um, nice, and let's go to the estimated uh, rating. My opponent had a rating of 1650, which I think I remember asking what his chess.com rating was, and he said like 1600, I believe, and I had a estimated rating of 2200. Thank you very much, chess.com. I will take that. Opening, we played... I played slightly more accurately middle game. I played a lot more accurately and we didn't get to an end game. Well, we didn't really get to an end game even though some people might call it an end game because I was just like, I don't know. It, can you even really call it a game at that point when I'm up that much of material? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, I'm now one out of two in this tournament or I was one out of two at this point in the tournament and we're going to go over my last game tomorrow where I had a white. Um, so yeah. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.